Hi, welcome back to Holly Hoppies. Let's craft a charming and whimsical carrot wreath together. Whether you're an experienced crafter or just starting out, this project is perfect for anyone looking to add a dash of creativity to their home this spring. So grab your crafting supplies and let's dive in and get started on this delightful carrot wreath that will be sure to bring a smile to all. Let's get started. Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. Today we're gonna to be doing a really cute wreath. It's a carrot wreath that I have been chomping at the bit to do. And we have a Dollar Tree carrot wreath frame. You might've seen these and wondered, what the heck do you do with these? Well, I'm gonna show you today. And there's many different styles that you can do, but I really love the poly burlap style. Uh, you are going to need, these are just a few things, we might not be using all of them, but we need the wire wreath frame. We're going to need some poly burlap mesh. I have some orange here, and it's the same type of mesh that I use for my pumpkin wreath, so I have tons left over. And I want to use up my rolls, but so these are partial rolls, uh, the 10 inch. Uh, orange and the 10 inch green of the poly burlap. So because it's the poly burlap, we will be needing a wood burning tool. And I have my hot shot holder here. I do have all the links for all my favorite crafting supplies in the description box of my tutorials. Uh, we will need the tempered glass right here because we're gonna be cutting our poly burlap. Uh, we will need some of this plastic mesh. We need a sheet of it, and let's see what size this is. This is seven inch mesh, 13 by 22, and we will be just, you need it big enough so we can measure this carrot and connect it to the back. And we're also gonna need some various florals and greenery. I'm not sure how much of this we're gonna use. I have some different textures here. Th this, I got these three right here, I got from the Dollar Tree along with these two, I believe. These were from the Dollar Tree, I think, yeah. All of these were, and I just think this is really pretty with the different orange. And then I got a couple different greeneries from the Hobby Lobby. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna use, but I got some different textured, something that might look like the top of a carrot, some different, this one. So we're gonna play around with that towards the end, as well as some ribbon. And I have various, ribbon that we'll use at the end. I'm not sure which combinations we're gonna use, but some some different Easter color ribbons. So we're gonna get started by attaching our mesh to our carrot wire wreath frame. So let's get started. So we're gonna start and we're going to grab our Sharpie and I'm using, going to the end, the edge here, because I wanna conserve, save as much of this as I can to use for other projects. This is great mesh, uh, plastic mesh. I use it for a lot of different designs, a lot of flower designs. Um, we're going to trace with our Sharpie here. And now we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut out our shape of our carrot hair on our plastic mesh. And I am using my favorite crafting scissors. These are in my Amazon store. I just absolutely love them. They're heavy duty and they're great for crafting projects, cutting wired ribbon, you name it. They are great scissors. 
So a lot of these uh, crafting supplies that you see me use, I do have the links for them in my Amazon store if you are interested. So we're gonna cut this out here. So I've cut the plastic mesh in the same size as our wreath frame, and now we're going to zip tie it to our frame here. And I have these zip ties here. I get them on Amazon, and they come in a pack of all different sizes, and these are the smaller ones. And you want it to be um, thin enough that's going to be able to, or less wide to go through your plastic mesh. So we're just going to start zip tying this to our carrot frame here. And I'll start, let's just start down here at the point. And you always wanna go up a couple notches so it's not at that very last one. So it catches everything really good. And just going to take our time now and work our way, just zip tying it around so it's secured to our frame. And we'll go under, whoops, you got to make sure your zip tie is turned the right way. So I'm just going to work um, and get this all zip tied here, work our way up the frame here, going, making sure you're a couple of those notches in here. And zip tying it to that wire frame. We don't want that plastic mesh to go anywhere. And we'll just keep going up the sides here. All right, so I have all my zip ties. Um, my mesh is secured to the frame. Maybe I'm gonna add a couple more down here. And now we're just gonna clip those off with our wire clippers. All right, so I just have them randomly on the wreath frame here. So let's go ahead and clip those off. All right, so there we have our mesh connected to our bunny frame here, or carrot frame here. So now we're gonna get started with our design. So I'm taking my deco mesh, my poly burlap mesh. I have my tempered glass cutting surface and I'm gonna cut 10 pieces at 10 inches of the orange. And we're gonna need four pieces of the green. So let me get this cut. And then we're gonna get started with our carrot here. I know everybody's been really excited for this tutorial. I've been chomping up a bit to make a carrot. It's been on my list since last year. I never got to it. So that's what I love about it is if you can't get to it one year, you are always can come back to it the next. So here I am making my carrot wreath. Two, four, six, seven. Let me get another roll here. Um, let's 
see. Let me just kind of cut this piece off here. I don't like the way that one looks. Okay, let's get three more pieces here. I haven't worked with my wood burner in a long time and I just love it so much. There was a timer that's all I was using was my wood burning tool to cut my mesh. And my latest designs, I haven't needed it. Two, four, six. Two, four, six, eight, nine. One more. And then we're going to cut four of the green. There we go. And we're going to take our green. And we're going to cut four pieces of our green. You can use, I have an olive green here. You can use a brighter green. Whatever shade of green that you want to use. wood burning tool my holder I mentioned earlier that I did get this from Susie's wreaths and things she makes a lot of wonderful products to hold your mesh hold your ribbon hold your um, cordless glue gun the, I love this because I was that little stand that it comes with it always makes me feel like it, I'm gonna burn myself and this is I know it's secure I know it's in there and I do have the link in the description box of all my tutorials. So we're gonna put that off to the side. We don't need our tempered glass anymore. And now we're gonna get started with our petals. So we're gonna take those same zip ties. We'll be using those. You can use zip ties, any zip ties of your choice. We're gonna take our mesh and we're gonna leave it curl side up. We have the finished edges on the left and the right. And we're gonna bring the bottom corner up, we can bring that corner up, but we're gonna bring this corner up and we're going to lay it so it goes over this unfinished edge just a tad. So, so I have it like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is actually, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna plug my wood burner back in. So what we're gonna do is we are, I brought my wood burning tool out. Um, I forgot we need to do one more edge here because I, I like a really nice finished petal. And this part's optional, but I highly recommend it because it just, it makes your petal look really pretty. So we have it curl side up, finish edges on the left and right. And we're gonna take the bottom corner, whether it's your right corner, your left corner, we're gonna bring this finished edge here up over this unfinished edge. So if you have to go over a little bit, and so it, it might come over this corner edge here, which is fine, you wanna, have it so all as you see is this beautiful finished edge right there see that finished edge right there and see how this is unfinished and it's coming over the finished edge well you're going to use that guide that finished edge see that finished edge underneath the, there you're going to use that as your marker and what you're going to do is you're going to follow that that finished edge you're going to just you can see it come through the bottom so you can use that as your guide and what we're doing is we're just making this nice and straight and it's going to give us a beautiful a beautiful petal so see how i got that edge cut off there and now i have this beautiful finished edge and this beautiful edge here so let's, I'm gonna put this off to the side and we're gonna do that same thing for all 10 of our petals. So I'm bringing my finished edge up this way, my bottom right corner, or like I said, you could do your bottom left corner 
and then you would cut down the side here. But I'm gonna stay consistent and do my bottom right corner. I'm bringing it, this finished edge, up over that unfinished edge. And if you gotta adjust it a little bit, that's fine. You want that just to, all you wanna just see a finished edge right there. And see how this is hanging over our line? And now we're gonna cut that so it's a beautiful, nice, straight edge. And you can just go a nice, slow, steady pace and it's gonna seal that mesh as you go along. And see how we have that beautiful finished edge there? And now we'll put that off to the side. So we're gonna keep going with all of those petals and we're gonna do the same thing to the green until we have all of these finished like that. And we only have 10. When I do my pumpkin wreaths, I do the same thing to every single petal. So you just have a beautiful pumpkin petal. And see, I have that placed over there. And just following that edge as my guide. So I have a nice, straight, finished edge. And look at that, how pretty that is. I'm gonna open my window. You wanna have a nice ventilated area when you're using your wood burning tool. Also wear a mask. All right. And like I said, you don't have to do this. You could still fold the petal the way I'm gonna show you. It's just gonna look nicer when it's all, everything's nice and finished here. So I'm gonna keep going till I have all 10 of these done in the orange and all four done in the green. So we have 10 of our orange prepped and four of our green prepped. And by the way, I just wanted to let you know a little FYI that this is the same exact method that you use for the pumpkin wreath. If you haven't seen my pumpkin wreath tutorial, check it out. This is the same exact petal same exact technique that I use for each and every one of my pumpkin wreaths. So, but you just, you're doing that to a lot more pieces to fill up that pumpkin wreath than what we're gonna use for our carrot wreath today. So let me get my glue gun put off to the side, my tempered glass, and we are gonna get ready to start our carrot. All right, so now we're gonna make our petals that we're gonna use. I call them petals, but it's what we're gonna use for our carrot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the, um, whether you're left or right-handed, I happen to be left-handed in case you haven't noticed, you could do it this way if you're right-handed. So we're gonna have the flat side here and I'm going to twist that corner, just tuck this corner under about an inch or so. And then I'm gonna pinch and grab up the edge here, up the back of this straight edge. And I get to this edge, we're just gonna pinch that under and then grab, grab the bunch. And this is where you're gonna 
you, you're gonna manipulate your mesh and you're gonna make a cone or a scoop, I guess you can call it. And this mesh is really good. It'll stick to itself. And see, usually I'll keep my glue gun or my, I'm gonna get it out again because it's just, I get so picky on stuff. But um, let me just plug it back in here. So what I'll do is that's bugging me right here, this little edge. So I'm just gonna straighten that that point out right there. So I have my scoop here and I might um, trim off this little excess right there. I mean, it really isn't gonna matter because they're gonna be overlapping, but it's just kind of little things like that that I just do. So I'm going to put the zip tie on the edge and we're gonna get all of these ready first before we add it to our frame. So I, I'm gonna take some time to get the rest of these petals and then we can just do that finishing stuff towards the end. Actually, I'm gonna do with this side on the right side now. I'm gonna flip it under, pinching. I'm kind of doing like a fan fold to the end here. See how it's just kind of fan folding? And then I come to the end and I'm bringing that end under and now I got this whole base here that I'm grabbing at least an inch up the base and see how it's scooped this way. Now I'm gonna bend the scoop this way and see how that one's perfect. I don't need to do any trimming. You'll find that you have to do this kind of stuff when you get down to the, from the middle to the end of the roll, it'll start getting a little warped and you might have to fix some pieces like that. So we're gonna put our zip tie on and we're just gonna keep doing these little scoop petals here that we're gonna add to our wire wreath frame. So let me get that clipped and I'll put that one off to the side. Now we're gonna do another one. We're going to bend this down about an inch, that corner, and we're fan folding, pinching and grabbing till we get to about another inch from this edge. We're tucking that under and pinching that last part of it. We have our petal here. We have a nice grip on it. We're gonna form our scoop. See, like that, I'll trim off too. Like I said, just little things like that bother me. Um, and you probably won't even see it in the design because they're gonna be overlapping, but it's just how I am. I just love to pay attention to that, those details like that. And see this point is looking really good. So probably won't have to do anything. Maybe trim it a little bit. I'll put that in my trim pile. And we're gonna tuck it under. We're fan folding till we get to an inch left here and tucking that under and pinching that, we're forming our scoop and adding our zip tie. And just doing this, all this ahead of time is just gonna make this wreath, it's gonna go so fast. And we just form, make sure we're forming a cute little scoop there. And we're just going to keep doing that the same fan folding along that straight edge, tucking those corners under, and you'll start getting into the flow and it'll be just a piece of cake. This is a, a petal that we use, a certain type of petal that is used in a lot of flowers, the sunflower design, um, different floral wreaths, different flower wreaths. See, I might trim that off a little bit. So it's good to know that you are doing a petal and you could do flowers, all kinds of things with this petal. It's very versatile. And we're 
we're tucking that under that way. There we go. So we're going to keep doing this to all of our pieces that we cut, our 10 pieces of our orange, our four pieces of our green, and then we're going to get ready to build our design. So I'm going to keep going and then we'll come back and trim those off together. now let's just trim up the couple ones that I wanted to trim and I'm just gonna trim that little edge off right there that looks good and this one I wanted to trim that and this little piece right here And this one is bugging me right there. And there we go. See, just that little bit I wanted to just basically we're just cleaning it up a little bit. All right, just that looks much better. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish up these four green and we are gonna have so much fun making this carrot wreath. You're absolutely going to fall in love with it. So let me keep going with these last green ones. And there you have it. We have 10 of our orange and four of our green. Our petals are all done, finished off beautifully. And now we are going to add them to our carrot wreath frame. All right, so we have our 10 petals of our orange. We have four of our green. And we're going to get ready to add this to our carrot wreath frame with that mesh that's on the back there. We're gonna use that mesh to secure it, our petals to our frame. So let's get started. So now we're ready to put our carrot wreath design together and we're gonna use those same zip ties. You want any kind of zip tie that's gonna be able to fit through your, your mesh squares and that it's not so wide. Like I have this other one and see it's a little bit too wide. So you just wanna make sure you have the right size zip ties. See how that's just perfect to go through those little plastic mesh squares. So we're going to start with our first petal here and we're going to add it about halfway between this bar and the tip. We're going to place that right about so and we can put our zip tie you can either put this, you could preload the zip tie first once you get a general placement area and you wanna go about a half an inch or so across and then we'll stick that right there and let's go under the zip tie that's on our, our flower petal to make sure it has a nice secure hold and we tighten that down really good and then we'll clip that off. So we have our first one placed on our wreath here. Okay, and now we're going to place two 
on the next section here. So our next two are going to be placed right underneath this second zigzag bar. We're going to place it right in there. So we're going to do overlap them and we're going to do something like this right onto that mesh and they're something right around like that. So they're overlapping and they're in that, this area here, this area. So let's go ahead and preload a couple zip ties and bring it over about a half an inch. We'll do one there and let's just make sure we like that placement. Yep, that'll work good. And then we'll do the other one to the other side of it. Coming across that plastic mesh about a half an inch. So I have my two zip ties preloaded and I'll place my next orange petal right there in the zip tie. And Bring that down, clip it off, and then I will place the other one overlapping, coming under that zip tie that's on my petal, and see how they're just overlapping right there? Then we're clipping off the top of our zip tie. So now we have three of our petals added to our carrot wreath. So our next set is going to be three. So our next set is going to be three and we're gonna be in this section right here, right underneath this bar that's right before this zigzag. And we're going to do that same thing. We're going to overlap, or you could do the two sides first and then put the middle on the top there. That's how we'll do it. So we're just, the top of our petals are gonna to be touching this bar and then it's up to you once you get them placed on the, see how it's just touching the top of that bar. Then we'll kind of look, gauge where our petal is falling and that's gonna determine the placement of our zip tie. So I can see the little holes, I can gauge it right underneath. So that's where I started. And then I'm going to go across half an inch, a few squares, and we'll place this one right here. That one's gonna be on one side. And the other one will be on the other side. We'll do that same thing. And I like that placement off to the side here. Making, grabbing my zip tie and hitting a square that's gonna hit that right below. Bringing it over a few squares, half an inch. And then we will go ahead and place this one on the side the other side. And now that third one is gonna be right in the middle. See how those two are overlapping? This one's gonna nestle right in the middle of those other two. And look how fast our carrot's coming. Once we get all that prep done, 
it really is comes together very nicely very fast and I'm gauging my zip tie where it's going to land underneath that other zip tie on the pedal I'm coming across and then I will go ahead and place this one right smack in the middle if you had longer zip ties, it'd be a little easier to work with, but these are working just fine, but sometimes it could be a little hard on your fingers, so the bigger ones you can manipulate a little bit better, but I like these. I want to use them up. I have all different sizes. I get a pack on Amazon that comes with different sizes, and I do have the link to those zip ties in my... Amazon store in the description box. So now we have the three. So now we have four left here, and that's gonna be our final four orange. So our last four petals are going to go into this section right here in between those zigzags. And we'll do the two sides first, like so and then we'll overlap the other two, right? Like so, so that's gonna create the last part of our carrot here. So let's go ahead and add those now. Same type of thing, you want these two to fall in the sides. Actually, let's do this. Let's add the top of the carrot is going to the top of the carrot we're going to add let's see here let's make sure this top is at the top of this bar so we might we're going to go ahead and connect it right into the very top of the section underneath this this bar right here so let's go ahead and Put the top of the carrot right there. So about like so, we want to catch that. Let's go up a little higher. We want to get right underneath this, this bar here. So let's just do right very close to that bar. And the way we nestle it, this top part is gonna to be touching that bar. So this one is on the outside edge here. And then we'll do another one on the other side here. Same thing, we want it to come right underneath this bar here. Coming across. Don't use the very end. Maybe always come in a square so it's not right at that very last square. And this one is going to go right on this side now the right side. There we go. So we have one on the left, one on the right. And by zigzagging everything, we're covering up the mesh, we're covering up that bar. And now we're going to add, these two are going to be right here, right? Same thing. This is touching that bar. And this one, we're just gauge, gauging it with our placement. And we'll put that right around there. Coming over a few squares straight across. And placing that right in this section right here. So it's overlapping our petal. All 
All right, we're getting there. We have one more of our orange, which will complete our base of our carrot here. And this one, we will overlap the other ones. And placing it right around there. So I'm gonna add my zip tie. Coming over a few squares, right around so. So that is the base of our carrot and look at how cute our design is coming along. Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness. Okay, so now we have the leaves up here, the green part of our carrot, and we're gonna be adding those right underneath this bar right here. And the same type of thing, we're going to add the two on the sides, and you can angle these a little bit towards, see how I have them angled like that, so they look like they're leaves coming down the carrot. And then these two will be in, it doesn't have to be right under the bar, but you're just gonna place them pretty close. You can zigzag them a little bit. So let's go ahead and add the sides on first. And we're just kind of going right in this little section here, right along this bar here, right around like so. So we're just coming up this bar about two inches. So this is about two inches from the end here. And our zip tie will be coming in right underneath the other zip tie. So I have that placed like so. And I will gauge it. So I'm coming in. I don't wanna be right at the end corner there. So I'm taking it in another bar and we'll do something like this. Looking good. So let's add. So these, the way we scooped them, made a scoop, it's covering up the tops of the other carrots really nicely. They're just sit, nestling right inside that scoop. And we're gonna add that one. I like it because it's it's nestled right over those two tops of the carrots, and I can add my zip tie. You can either leave it here too if you want, and you can just see it coming up the other side. It's up to you. And I'm always coming down underneath the original zip tie that's on our petal. All right, so now we have the two on the ends. And now these two are going to overlap each other right there in the middle, like so. And you can just play around. If you want it staggered down a little bit more, that's up to you. You can place these however, whatever look that you want. I'm gonna keep them right around like so. So this one's gonna go here. Getting 
my zip tie ready and And now we're ready to add our final leaf and it's like I said it's if you want to go down you want to come up however you want to put it I'm going to keep it in that same pattern there right around so and I'm coming right underneath that zip tie lifting that out of my way so I can see what I'm doing coming across three or four little squares there. And now I'll be placing this last one right like so. And see how it's indenting? You can always just make it scoop again, just playing with it. And that completes our carrot here and now the top part is going to be our fun flowers greenery some ribbon all of our embellishments and that is where you can really customize it to your liking so let's get started with a few different um, embellishment ideas so i just wanted to show you a few different ideas that i had i was I'm all about texture. If you see any of my other videos, you know I love texture. So I got some different greenery. I wasn't sure what we're gonna use, but if I don't use it all, I mean, I know I'm not gonna use it all. I just want was thinking about some different kinds of greenery texture. So these are a few things I found at Hobby Lobby and I thought were really pretty. I thought I love that. I thought that looks just like a carrot top. We have some different greenery here. Here's some different texture there. Um, we have this beautiful piece. These two I found at the Dollar Tree, which I thought would be really pretty too, with some different orange colors there and some green. And these, I thought this was pretty too. This was at Dollar Tree. And there's some different flowers I found at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what I'm going to use. Um, we have all, I don't, because I don't know what kind of ribbon I'm going to use. That's going to depend on what flowers I use. Just pulled out some different flowers from my flower stash. Um, we can do some more spring-like. I have some ones that we can pick off of this one. So we're just, that's where you're gonna have fun and make it your own. But right now we're going to add some greenery and we're gonna decide what ribbon we're gonna use. We're make, gonna make a big bow here. We're gonna have some, some different things hanging down the top here. And we're gonna make this look really beautiful. So I wasn't trying to overwhelm you with all the greenery and florals. I was just giving you some different ideas of different textures that we can use in our design. So now what we're gonna do is figure out our beautiful bow that we're gonna add here. And I have some various ribbon that I've got at Hobby Lobby. I'm just not sure what colors we're gonna use yet. So let me brainstorm a bow and then we're gonna make a big gorgeous bow and we're gonna add it to the top here and then we're gonna add all of our florals, our greenery and embellishments coming from the top here. So I took a little time, got myself some coffee and I was practicing or making a bow and practicing a new technique that I learned from 
a TikTok page and it's wreaths by design. She was having this, I've seen this, I've saved it and I've been dying to try this technique of bow. And let me just say that I am completely obsessed. It's a different way to make a bow and look at how gorgeous that bow is. I mean, let me tell you, I am, I'm obsessed. We're going to be making this bow. We're going to be putting that on our beautiful wreath here. And then we're going to add all of our... Doesn't that look so pretty with those colors? Oh, I'm so excited. So I'm going to show you how to make this. Um, like I said, I've been practicing it and I wanted to make sure that I had it down before I showed you all. And I was trying out different colors of my ribbon and I think this was the color combination that I want to use and I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous bow. So we're going to start this gorgeous bow today that we're going to add to the top of our carrot and then we're going to embellish it with some greenery and some floral and it is just going to be so gorgeous. So we're going to be making this gorgeous bow and this this one has these are my different ribbons that I used one two three four five six we are going to add a seventh one on here because I, I just want to add that color on there too. So um, you can add as many different um, ribbons that you want. Um, you can do them as big as you want, 12 different, eight different, nine different, but the technique's gonna be exactly the same. And let me show you, you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is to make this bow. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with my first one and that is gonna be this gorgeous burlap ribbon. I'm sure you've probably seen this at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. It's definitely a staple in, um, my wreath making. So what we're going to do is we don't have to measure this exactly. It doesn't have to be like perfect. Um, but for this tutorial sake, we will do, let's do a nine inch tail and then we're going to twist it because this one does is one sided ribbon. It has the wire on the back side, and we're going to make a loop, okay? And this is where you don't have to measure. I don't want you to feel like you have to measure every bow, but we're gonna make it about like so. So you don't have to measure this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's just a very simple technique. So we have, we have our tail on there, and then now we're going to add a loop. Now this is pretty thick, so I'm just going to fan fold this in the middle before I stick it on the bow dabra. And I'm just gonna make a loop about like so. Like I said, it doesn't, you don't have to measure it. it, it this doesn't have to be perfectly measured loops, okay? You're just making it a size that looks good for you, okay? So I like about that size. And for this tutorial sake, that is, let's see, it's about a five and a half inch, five and a quarter inch loop there. All right, so now we're gonna cut this over here where the tail is at, okay? And we're making, for this bow, you're only doing one loop. So now before we go on, we're going to dovetail our ends here. Folding that in half, and I'm going from the open corner to the fold, or you can go from the fold down to the open corner, but make sure you're doing that same angle so it's cutting the dovetail. So we have one loop on our bow here, bow maker. So now for that, we're gonna do another loop. All of these are single loops, okay? So for this one now we're doing the loop we have a loop on this side now we're going to do the loop on the other side so where there's the loop you're going to put the tail so i think we decided that we were what doing a 10 inch tail so let's do about a 10 inch and we can adjust these as we go along and 
we're going to twist this one because it's one-sided. And we're going to make our loop now on this other side. And you just make it, eyeball it about the same size as your other one, okay? And now you're gonna bring this to the end of that tail and you're gonna clip it. And I'm just going to turn this so I can dovetail the ends. And we're dovetailing the ends. Now the first two that I put on is two inch ribbon just because I'm doing different sizes, but you could do all the same size. You could do all the one and a half inch, all the two an inch. You can adjust different ones. So there we have a loop on this side. We have a loop on this side. And we're very simply doing that same pattern as we go along. So since there's a loop on this side, we're gonna do a loop on the other side. So I'm gonna take my ribbon. I'm going to make it about the same length right there as my other tails that are already dovetailed. I'm going to put that on there. And now I'm going to make a loop, move that up higher, on this other side. And now I'm going a little bit, this ribbon is smaller it's the inch and a half and I'm making my loop I'm eyeballing it I'm gonna make this one a little bit shorter than the burlap one just a little bit and now I'm bringing my end over here about the eyeballing it about the same length of that tail and I'm cutting that off and you can see what I'm doing here, the technique, and you could stack, like I said, I'm just flipping it to make it easier for me. Oh, that is, I didn't realize that that was, that is um, one-sided ribbon. So let's, is that on the right side? Yeah, this one's on the right side, but this is one-sided, so I'm gonna twist that so we could see the pretty side. Okay, so now I'm gonna dovetail these two ends. And Okay, so now we have that loop. And now I'm gonna take my next pattern. I'm gonna start, we have a loop on the right. Now we're gonna do our loop on the left. So my tails are always going over the one, the side that has the loop. And this one might be, it's always, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's one-sided or two-sided, but this probably one-sided, so I'll flip that as well. And now I'm going to make my loop a little bit shorter than my two inch one on that other side there. See, there's my two inch and I'm just coming a little bit shorter and I'm bringing this tail out to around the same length as the ones and we're clipping that. Turning that around so I can dovetail these two ends. And dovetailing. Okay. So now we're going to move on to, let's do, um, I'm debating if I want to, yeah, well, let's go ahead and do this one now. Do I want to do that one now? Yep, we'll just keep it in that same way. So I have a loop on this side. So my tail is always gonna go over on the two, top of that loop side. 
yep, this is one-sided. I'm going to twist it and we're going to make that loop the same size as that orange one that we have down there. There we go. Pull to the end and we're clipping that. Clipping it so I can dovetail it. dovetailing it all right so now we're going to our next color let's add this last one here and I'm making that the same size right there and I'm cutting it right at the end all right, so there we have that. And we're gonna dovetail the last two ends here. All right, so this is what we have so far. So now we're gonna take a pipe cleaner. I have a white pipe cleaner here. And we're going to take our stack off. Taking our pipe cleaner, putting it right over that top and twisting it. Give it a good couple twists here so it's on there very good. Okay, so now we're gonna split the pipe cleaner on down below. And what we're gonna do is we're starting with our bottom tails here. We're working from the bottom up. So we're going to, we're going to split those out and adjust those. We're taking the first two and we're working up. We're taking just the tails and we're splitting them out, splitting them out to the sides, okay? And here's the last ones. We're pulling them out, pulling them out to the side. So we just adjusted the three tails on this side and we have the loops that we haven't done yet. We're gonna flip it over and do that same thing on the other side. Taking our two bottom tails and we're splitting those out. And our next two tails, we're splitting those out. And then we have these last ones on top here. All right, so now we are going to take our bows, our loops, and we're going to fluff our loops up. And you're just going to spend some time adjusting your loops the way that you want. And we're doing our next tail here, our next loop here. And this is our burlap one right there. Okay, so now we're going to grab our pipe cleaner and we're gonna hold our pipe cleaner. And now we're going to take our fingers and we're going to just go along the wired ribbon and with our fingers and it's just giving it a slight curl. We're gonna do that all the way around. And you can, if you wanna cut any of those tails a little shorter, you can, but look at how easy and how gorgeous. Look at that, we made one identical and just nothing flat. And look at how beautiful that is. And you can use, like I said, as many ribbons as you want. You can do up to 12 
ribbon bow. You're just going to use that same technique and just look at that. You see all those gorgeous colors and it just pops. It's such a pretty bow. It's so different than the all the same bows that you see, the same size, you know, two, two loops on this side, two loops on this side, another, you know, a smaller one, you know, it's all like exactly uniform. And this just it gives it a pop and it's so pretty and different. And I just love it. I don't think I'll ever do bows any other way. So now we're going back to our design. So now we have our design and we're going to do all the fun stuff at the top. And I like this burlap part down here because I think it's a great transition into our carrot design. Let me go up a little higher so you can see better. And we're basically going to be adding this bow to our design. And we're going to just put our pipe cleaners through a couple of these holes right here in the middle and we're attaching our bow that way. So I'm going to add them like right here. So I'm going to put one through and another one through about a half an inch, just like we've been doing everything else. And I'm making sure I'm turning it. So I have the burlap coming down the way I want. Might have to adjust that again. And we're gonna add our bow like so. And I don't wanna like smush my bow, but basically see, I'm pulling it through the mesh and then I'm gonna go ahead and twist that. So it's at least a half an inch before I clip it off with my wire clippers. Look at how pretty our carrot is turning out. flip it. See how I have it? I don't want to smush it like I said, so I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to just push that down. I can bend it in half first if I want, and then just like so. So this is what we have so far. And I are you kidding me? Look at how absolutely gorgeous that is. And if you want to cut some of these tails so they're a little bit shorter, I might do that with these top ones here. And you just curl around your finger. So there is our bow now. So now we're going to add some more fun stuff to this design and some greenery, a couple florals, and we will be ready to wrap this up pretty soon here. I think I'm going to cut these maybe a little bit shorter here. This one a little bit shorter. And you can play around with different ribbon combinations and just let your imagination go wild. Look at how gorgeous that looks on our carrot. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? I am so happy that I found her tutorial. And once again, it's Wreaths by Designs is who taught me this. I believe she has a YouTube channel as well. I did find her on TikTok and I'm so happy I did. So that is that. So now we're going to add some other fun stuff here and here we go so now what we're gonna do is take different greeneries and florals and we're gonna add it to the top I want to add a couple I think these would just be perfect to add down the sides here so let me just where is my big there they are I'm telling you, when I'm done with this one, I am cleaning my craft room before I start another 
tutorial because everything is just a mess right now. So I just, gosh, isn't this so pretty? I found this from the Dollar Tree and I just thought it was super cool. So we're gonna be adding some different things. This is where you're just gonna have fun. I just kind of envision this trailing down, maybe down the side here, off the sides. So let me get a few things decided how I'm gonna do it and like something like that, possibly this one coming down the sides a little bit. So let me get all this adjusted, get my design figured out, and then we'll finish the finishing touches on this beautiful carrot. All right, so I have a couple little accents here, this little flower. We're gonna do a little something right here, a little sprig of greenery. And I have these two pieces here that I cut to the length that I want. And what we're gonna do is connect those to this mesh that we have still at the top here. Let me move the bows. So we still have mesh up here at the very top. And we're just gonna connect that with a zip tie, just like we did with connecting our pieces. I'm just gonna get it about the position that I want. I think I like it like that, about coming down that length on the sides. So, or you can either just push your, um, you could just push your greenery right through the mesh too, because a lot of this stuff is, now it's a little too thick. So I know it's hard to see, but you see right there? You see how I have that sitting right there? And I'm gonna zip tie that right onto the mesh. Just like so. And you could do a couple if you want to make sure it's on there really good. And so it's gonna look something like that. Just coming on, I want those two to come off the sides. It has that beautiful orange in it and green, so I just think it looks super cool. I'm gonna do one more zip tie to make sure this is on there really good. There we go. And I'm gonna trim that excess greenery off the top there above the zip tie. So I have that one on this side and now I wanna do that same thing with this on the other side and I want them to be about the same length. So I'm going to zip tie this right here onto the mesh. I know it's hard to see with the bows but you, know, you get the general idea what I'm doing. I'm just zip tying the stem part of my greenery onto that mesh. And I'll do one more, give it nice and secure all right i'm going to trim that excess stem off the top and we don't have these on there yet i was just playing around so we have these secured now for good. And we could, when we're all done, we'll get that ribbon fluffed back out. So I thought that looked really pretty with just that coming down the sides there. And, 
Oh yes, loving that. All right, so now we're gonna add some more greenery coming out, maybe out the, the sides up here. And we can add some flowers. I mean, whatever you want to do, we can do. So I have this flower here, this bunch, and I really like these little ball things that are on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip those off. A lot of times I'll get these bunches from Hobby Lobby and then I just dissect them, take off what I want. And they work, usually they have a nice array of all different kinds of flowers on them. This one's already been picked off of. And we could take these little yellow ones, would be pretty too. So we'll do something fun with these and we'll just, you're just gonna play around. You're gonna add, we might add these like coming out the top there, maybe something like that. Coming um, out the, popping out the ribbon right there. It's just about playing around. But before we do all that kind of stuff with some flowers and things in the middle, I wanna add a little bit more greenery coming out the top here. And we still have a couple sides here with the mesh that you can see a little bit. So we wanna play around with our greenery. And this is where I have different textures. I even have this one, which I thought would be nice. Like a combination of this. Let's cut this and see what it looks like. So a lot of this times, like I say in a lot of my tutorials, we're doing this together. We are creating our design together. So you could start adding some different greenery to make it like pop up the top there. This one's a little bit stiff, that's why I like it. Um, but this I'm absolutely in love with. I think it looks just like the top of the carrot. So let's play around with this and see what we got here. I hope you're enjoying your carrot design. It's just so much fun. I knew this was going to be, this one just excited me so much and reminds me a lot of my pumpkin wreath. If you haven't seen that tutorial, go check it out. Um, I mean, I know it's spring and stuff like that, but it's the petals are very similar. Yeah, we're going to add this. That's what we're going to do. We're gonna add some of this coming out our sides here. And see, a lot of times it's just playing around with different stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add right onto that top of our mesh there. And that's gonna cover up that little area. Play around with two on that side. So you got this little part right up here and it's just perfect to zip tie something on there. See, just enough for that. Ooh, that one little bunch I think is gonna be perfect. And then we have that last one right there, up top right there, and we can do a couple more there. We'll do two on the sides. And two stems right there. And look at that, how pretty that's gonna be. Oh my goodness, that's gonna look so pretty. And then we also have, I mean, if you wanted to add more texture, you can add, you know, add something else in there too. But I like that. I think that looks just like the top of a carrot. And where did that other one go that I had from the Dollar Tree? Oh yeah, I had this one. You can add some of this in there too if you wanted mix it but I don't know I think I'm gonna leave it with this because this is just to me looks just like a carrot top look at how pretty that is okay so now we're going to add these like we cut that one little bush and we have six pieces two we have four and we have six we're going to add those See, two, four, six, right on there. So let's do that now. So we're gonna take our zip ties now and we're gonna add 
two of these little, let me turn it this way so I could see it a little bit better. I'm gonna add those right there. So they're coming right off the top of our carrot here. Alright, so I have my glue gun plugged in and we're going to add the little very last finishing touches onto this design. And I have this little, these little guys from the Dollar Tree and I cut them all up and I want to add just a little bit more into this greenery up here. So I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to be placing this underneath just to give it a little extra, extra um, flare here. I think that would be really pretty coming out the top there. And so I'm just basically placing them underneath this greenery onto that plastic mesh. And we're going to zip tie it just like we did everything else. I'm just, I always like to put it on first. Make sure that I like the placement before I get that in there. So you're going to add as much stuff as you want, as little as you want. You're just going to really just put a fun, creative flare on there. And I think I like something like that. See how it just kind of gives it a little extra coming out the top there. And you don't have to do this, but I just think that would be kind of fun. And then what we're gonna do is I wanna add a little accent in the middle. I wanna tie in some of this. So I'm gonna go into hot glue, probably hot glue something like, some, something like this with a flower, um, maybe add a little green sprig coming out as well. And then I have these little guys that we cut off earlier and I think I'm just going to add them into the design around the top here. Something like that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add these last finishing touches. And I might even add a little bit of this onto the design as well. So basically that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna add all the rest of my little accents here and we're gonna get ready to wrap up this gorgeous design here. So now I'm gonna zip tie these little sprigs that I have coming out. I have them all placed where I want them. And just like we did everything else, we're gonna zip tie it onto the mesh. Okay, so our last thing is we're gonna add some fun little touches here in the middle. And I want to add, I want to add these to just to start tying everything in. So I'm just going to use my hot glue gun for this. And I'm gonna grab my hot glue mat because I have ruined so many of my cutting mats by getting hot glue on them. 
And I love this little silicone hot glue mat. I have that one in the link in my Amazon store. You'll find my link in the description box. And it will, my Amazon store will have all my favorite crafting supplies that I use. And we'll add those there. And then I want to add this little, we'll do that after the flower. We're going to add a flower. Going to add that right there. And I wanted to add this little touch of blue to the other side. And this is, like I said before, you're just getting, putting your spin on it. You can get super creative and just have fun because that's what crafting is about. It's about just letting your imagination take over and just going with it. There is no wrong or right in crafting. There are no mistakes and you just go for it. And I wanted to add a little, oh yeah, this little touch of greenery too. Let's add that down here. And we're just tying in all of our elements into our design here. Add that there. And then I think I'll add, we'll tie in these last, this last little piece right there. And this is going to complete our design and we will put a, add that right under there. So we've tied in all of our elements. If you see, you can cut your tails the way you like. You can curl your ribbon, get everything just pretty. And let me just fix this one right here. Get those tails cut the way you want. If they're too long, you can cut them down, fix your fish tails. Just get all the rest of these little elements looking pretty. And what happened to that? There it is. Okay. These come down the sides. And look at how gorgeous our carrot wreath turned out. Uh, that is so fun and so pretty. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna add a hanger right here. I don't wanna lay it and get it too smushed on there. Um, I'm gonna have to stick with these these um the green ones from hobby lobby are good i have them next door i need to go grab some but that would be a make it actually i probably have one in here here we go these are nice i like these ones from hobby lobby because they're skinny and they usually will fit through this is a seven inch plastic mesh um so just when you get it watch the size Make sure that you get the zip ties that are going to fit through your mesh. And I'm just trying to get the zip tie on the same row as the other one. There we go. And this is gonna be our hanger. And you could finish off your back if you want. Uh, you could trace that wreath frame with some felt. You don't have to because honestly, you're not going to see it. But if I do sell my wreaths, I always like to finish the back. And that is going to complete our design. And you just spend your time, get all your, your loops nice and fluffed, your tails. And look at how gorgeous that turned out. I mean, I am so happy that you came and we crafted this. Let me go up a little higher so you can see the whole gorgeous wreath. And you know, I'll take pictures of it hanging, but let's get it all in the frame there. And look at how gorgeous and fun 
that carrot wreath is and how easy was that to make. I know it looks a lot more complicated than it really is. We had fun. We did this together. There was no set plan going in on the embellishments and that, that is just letting um, your creativity just have fun and go wild and that's why I love crafting so much you just that moment when you just check out and those creative juices are flowing and you just you just go for it and I'm just so happy that you came to my channel I know I've had a lot of people that have been really excited to see this tutorial and I'm so happy to do what I do and to be able to bring you such beautiful designs it just it makes me so happy and i hope you'll come back to my channel and craft with me some more and in the description box down below you'll find my amazon affiliate link to my amazon store where you will find all my favorite crafting supplies as well as my social media links be sure to tag me on social media with your gorgeous carrot designs that always makes my heart so happy to see and don't forget to ring that bell subscribe like and follow me for more wreath and crafting ideas thanks for watching holly hobbies from my heart to yours And don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow me for more wreath and crafting ideas. Thanks for watching.